morning at NTV. A quarter past 8 a.m. We continue with Wednesday's edition of Morning Art and TV. My name is Priscilla Regina Naloga. Now, in our tech note, we are having a discussion about something that is very interesting, concerns pretty much the general Ugandan, and that is micro, small, and medium enterprises. Now, we are having the annual micro, small, and medium enterprises week. This is the third edition, and it's quite exciting to see it happening once again. We had two editions before COVID 19. And then for two years it went down, but it's now back on, and the focus is on chartering a pathway uh, for these enterprises to actually survive and thrive amidst COVID 19. Here to have more of this conversation with me is John Walgembe, who's the executive director with uh, medium, uh, sp uh, small enterprises, and also micro enterprises. Good morning to you, Walgembe, once again. Good morning, Priscilla, it's and uh, thank you for having me here. I think this is the first time I'm seeing your face uh, enlightened. Uh, bit. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the two times you've been here, you know, we've been having the tough conversations on yes. how do we charter paths with uh, DRC yes. Congo, how do yes. we help the uh, yes. medium, small, micro enterprises all survive through COVID-19. Yes. But now that we do have the annual week here, what yes. are the expectations? First of all, tell us about this annual week that you hold. Okay, so the annual semi-week is an event that is organized to celebrate the hardworking and resilient SMEs who are the backbone to this economy. As you know, 90% of the private sector in this country are MSMEs. They create very many jobs. They account for over 80% of non-farm employment in this country and close to between 25% to 75% of gross domestic product, depending on what you look at. So it's huge. It's a huge sector. And if we want to grow this economy, if we want to recover from COVID-19, we must give it focus. So this event and this week is an event where we allow the SMEs to speak, to tell us, not to complain, because we are talking about solutions now. We've had the opportunity to complain, or we don't have access to this market, we don't have this, but now we want to chat away for that's why our theme is chatting the path to recovery we want to say this is the path of course different businesses will take that path differently some people uh, some businesses are you know at an advanced stage of recovery some businesses are not they are still going through a very difficult time nonetheless we believe that the msme week is extremely critical we have a lot of sessions, a lot of speakers, but most importantly, we have exhibitions. We have asked SMEs, please come and showcase what you do. Let people see what you do, because ultimately, you cannot solve the recovery question without people selling. People must sell and earn revenue. Everything else follows thereafter. If you're talking about profitability, you're talking about paying taxes, if you're talking about employing people, you must have money. And the only way for you to do that is selling. So we have given them an opportunity to sell, and if you pass by the Uma Show Grounds, the Malpapa Soul, please, I'm appealing to all the viewers. Entrance is free. Don't fear, oh, they'll charge me this, they'll charge me the other. No, just go and see exactly what's happening. Okay. And the ingenuity of SMEs. You know, the, these people are heroes. The mere fact that they are still in business after COVID, we should celebrate them. I, I do commend them, by the way, they're real yes. heroes. Because I remember yes. when we had the lockdown on our kids, yes. uh, some people's cars became the newer kids. Some yes. people's bicycles became the newer kids. Some people's front yards became the newer kids. Yes. That resilience is actually something we commend uh, mm. these small, medium enterprises for doing. Now, away from that, mm. uh, of course, everything that has happened in COVID-19 has brought to light some realities mm. that mm. I believe uh, you as a federation need to address. So what are mm. some of those issues you intend to address in your panel discussions through this event? Okay, so firstly, we want to keep focusing on how to improve the business environment. It's critical because it's only through improving the business environment that you can attract investment, that you can support bus local businesses to grow, that you can build backward and forward linkages. And in a specific way, we're going to discuss the issue of taxation. How can we grow the tax base? Because as SMEs, we're also interested in growing the tax base. We're also Ugandans. We also want access to social services. So we want to support and think together with government on how to expand the tax base, but in a way that does not stifle the entrepreneurial spirit of Ugandans. You know, if you're too strict, it means that at some point business people give up. They say, oh, I'm running this business for government. Let me go and do something else. So you must be very careful but, but, and try to balance between 
implementing a strict tax regime and allowing businesses to thrive. The other issue we're going to discuss about is digital, the digital economy and how that can spur financial inclusion. We are having the financial sector deep in income, we are having post bank, we are having safe border, we are having all these actors. They are coming to put their heads together. But they are not going to lecture the SMEs. We also want them to come and listen. What do the SMEs want? We are also having something around the African continental free trade area and how innovation can help SMEs to tap into that. We are having Siatini come and contribute to that. We are having Oxfam because they are doing a lot of work supporting uh, MSMEs. And we are having SMEs themselves on that panel trying to discuss how best they are positioning themselves. And then we are also discussing uh, how best to ensure that we support women and youth-owned MSMEs. As you know, women and youth-owned MSMEs were the most affected uh, uh, by this pandemic. So I want to see how best can we support them in a special way. And we're having a lot of good exhibitors. We're having the Ghana Development Bank. A lot of people are saying, oh, UDB is inaccessible. It's now accessible. Please it's go going to, to come live go to their Omar store Grant. and ask them exactly, you know, share what your needs are. You know, we are having all these banks, Post Bank, you know, Post Bank is one of the banks that's delivering a small business recovery fund. Go to them and say, you know, these are my needs. Okay. Uh, go to the different exhibitors and try to engage them. So th that's the reason we have put the work together. So that SMEs don't have complaints. Oh, when I go to UDB, it's complex. Oh, when I go here, I cannot be helped. Go to the UMA show grounds, it's free entrance. The workshops are also free. Please attend and make sure that you get some value. Do, could you give me the profile of the expected uh, deliberator zone in this week? Okay, so I've mentioned that we expect the Director General of the Ghana Investment Authority. We've also invited the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority. You know, he's in principle confirmed that he'll come. Uh, he has a busy schedule, but we hope he makes it. The Minister of Trade will come to this event. We expect the executive director of the financial sector depending. We accept, expect the managing director of Post Bank. We expect SMEs themselves, whom we have put on those panels, so that we also get the SME perspective, so that it's not just us trying to lecture uh, to, to these people. We expect uh, uh, pro the MD of M the vice president of MFS Africa. MFS Africa is doing a lot of work around digital payments across the continent. So as SMEs look at going into other markets, they want to see how they can leverage this technology. So we, we also have a presentation on the uh, deal flow facility by the financial sector, depending that needs to support SMEs with uh, fi financing of over 500,000 US dollars and others. So we, we have a full house wow. but most importantly we have the smes because mm -hmm. this these individuals we can always get but it's the smes that we really want to hear from and we want to see how their views can be mainstreamed into policy you've mentioned something patent which is the africa continental free trade area mm. how do you intend to actually encourage these mm. smes to tap into such opportunities across the region and mm. uh, across the continent okay firstly uh, uh, viewers must appreciate what the African continent of free trade area is. When you have a free trade area, it means goods and services can be provided across this area tariff free. So the African continent of free trade area has um, country parties, about 55 of these. They have a combined population of about 1.3 billion and a combined GDP of about uh, three trillion US dollars. This is a lot of money and a huge potential. And if you look at this space, most of the countries that have signed up, most of the private sectors are dominated by SMEs. So we must encourage trade amongst SMEs uh, themselves. So through this event, we are going to show them how best they can ready themselves take advantage of this opportunity. As you also know, the Federation has been working with UNDP to support MSMEs to become export ready. To become export ready, we are talking about issues around standards and quality, branding and packaging. We have a good product. Some people have a bad product, which they package well. Then some people have 
a, 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 a a bad product, eh? A Possible. good product, but they don't package it well. A good product that they don't package well. Mm. So that is dangerous. Uh, for, for me, a person with a bad product, I just say, please go back and first get a good product on the market. But some people have good products, but they are not well packaged. So how can we support people to get products to market? But also, how can we support SMEs to aggregate? You know, not every SME is going to take the plane to deliver, I don't know, two baskets in Cameroon or whatever. But how can we aggregate so that we work together as associations, as cooperatives, and so on? Okay. Yes. The other challenge that is, uh, you know, cropping up with the, you know, SMEs and micros, you get to see them shying away from standardization of mm. their products. Mm. How do you tend to address that post-COVID-19? Because it's one of the best ways they can tap into continental trade-free zones. Mm. Okay. There are two things. They are what they call mandatory standards. Because now UNBS has gazetted certain standards that are mandatory. If you're dealing in food, for instance, you can't choose whether to pick a to, 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 to comply or not. It means you must comply. So as the Federation, we are encouraging SMEs to comply, first of all, with the mandatory standards. Because if you're not complying to mandatory standards, then you're breaking the law. And if you're breaking the law, there's no way you can run a sustainable business. The other issue is that we also want SMEs to interest themselves in what we call voluntary standards. There's a standard that's not mandatory, but the market demands it. Yes, you may have the NBA certificate, but people are not willing to buy your product. Then you have a problem. So interest yourself in voluntary standards. Most importantly, interest yourself in the standards the other side. Sometimes you have what you call mutual recognition of standards, but in certain countries they demand that in addition to the certification from UNBS, you get additional certification. Or they demand that you get certification from particular entities like SGS and others, you know, Bureau of Veritas and entities like that. So as you seek to export, find out the various range of standards that you need to comply with, and not just the mandatory standards, but also the voluntary standards. You know? The other issue is that you have to familiarize yourself with the export procedures because for you to benefit from the AFCFTA, you must comply with certain things. And most importantly, we talk about what we call the rules of origin. You must demonstrate that you are a, 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 an authentic beneficiary. So the first point you must show is that this product actually originates from Uganda and is able and rather complies with the requirements that are, um, that are put forward in the protocol. So these are all things that SMEs. You don't just wake up and say, I'm from Uganda, my passport is here, my product is here, therefore I'm not paying it. No, no, no. There are certain documents you must fill out locally before you can take advantage. Okay, and under the Federation, uh, is that something that is intentional and objective to s the things that you have to achieve throughout 2022? Very true. So we have this export readiness program, not just with UNDP, but we also run what we call the Passport to Export, where we support SMEs to build their capacity to export. We also organize trade missions, and we also participate in trade missions. For instance, uh, at the, as I speak now, Private Sector Foundation took a delegation to South Sudan and we are represented. So we are also keen to work with other actors in this ecosystem to ensure that we take our SMEs to, mar to market. Okay, mm -hmm. you've mentioned uh, Private Sector Foundation, uh, South mm -hmm. Sudan, yes. Uh, they made mm -hmm. a trip recently also to DRC yes. to just interest them in regional markets. Correct. Now, one of the things that um, indicates that they're actually doing something intentional is yes. you know, having to actually do physical in interactions, physical engagements, yes. and not just with SMEs or, mm. you know, private people, but also with the government leadership for that mm. regard. Now, mm. in your capacity, how are you actually building your muscle within the region, especially tapping into DRC, uh, given that the ratification instrument was placed within the East African community? The DRC market is a very interesting market, but we also don't want to be a bit naive. This market has been there all along. Uh, with its inherent challenges, insecurity, language, distrust, and so on and so forth. I mentioned the other day here that when I looked at the World Bank report, it mentioned that you need 600 days to get a commercial case to the courts of law in DRC. These are systemic issues the other side. So it shouldn't appear like this is Canaan, a land filled with milk and honey and so on. DRC is a market like any other. It has its challenges and we must go in with a sober mind. If you don't know French, 
you must sort out how are you going to communicate. You can say Swahili. No, Swahili is predominant in the eastern part. In Kinshasa and the other areas, it's French, French purely. And then how do you uh, overcome the distrust of Ugandans? You know, there's also that now in the DRC. So just making a visit is not enough. Cannot erase all those things. But it's a good first effort. And as a federation, we are supportive of these efforts. We have worked with the Private Sector Foundation. We have participated in their excursions. And uh, But we have also organized trade missions of our own. Last year, we organized a trade mission to Ghana. you know, And this year, we are organizing others. So we are very active. But you know, you also shouldn't take people who are ready to the market. First prepare. Eh? What are you taking? What do the other people like? So that when you go there, you, make, you get out something that's concrete. You, know? it's, you, you, you don't just run to the market when you're not sure what your product is and, and, and things of that sort. So as a federation, we have decided to focus on export readiness and collaboration with others to ensure that we can tap into those regional okay. and continental market. Um, now, we, of course, we, we intend to tap into the different regional trade-free zones. Mm. However, we do have mm. the East African community, and mm. I do believe that that's also a very strong market. Mm. Now, is there effort to actually have perhaps a joint East African medium and small enterprise convention meeting, engagement, interactions to be able to harmoniously um, enjoy the benefits of what you contribute to wow, the different thank economies? You. That's a very good question. Uh, and it's timely because only last week I was discussing with the East African Business Council and we are going to host here an event on the 28th bringing together SMEs across the ESC to discuss these issues. How do we work together more at the regional level? We also have the Juwakali Expo that's organized by East African Community Secretariat in December. It's going to take place at, at in, in Kololo. So all these are efforts to ensure that SMEs are, are more united across the region and working together. If you look at the straight data, most of the SMEs are selling in the region in the ESC region, followed by the commercial region. So it means we should not forget that the bulk of our market is here, even as we explore other markets. So as a federation, we are active, and we are working with the East African Business Council, which is the premier business body at the, at the East African level that handles these issues. Okay, John, all this sounds exciting and I'm very sure that, uh, you know, the participants are ready to gear on and put their best foot forward. However, the crisis that we're facing, not just as Uganda, but East Africa, Africa, the entire world, mm. uh, fuel prices are mm. not getting any kinder to us. And mm. the other day, a few hours ago, we were told fuel prices are still okay. And uh, fuel is one of those things that actually gets the engine running for mm. medium and small enterprise. So mm. such calamities that mm. are present, even though we are mm. pushing for recovery, I'm pretty mm. sure are dampening the mood of engagement for your, you know, federation and also those that contribute to the federation. So what's the way forward? It's tough. If you look at the monetary policy statement by Bank of Uganda, just looking at it uh, last, last night, it says that we're in an, an uncertain context. Why? The drivers for this inflation and the high commodity prices are primarily external. So the government, you know, you, you must also put government on the spot for things it's, it can actually address. In this particular instance, the bulk, maybe 70 to 80 percent, are external. And this we must appreciate because others in other countries, in, uh, in fact, are facing worse scenarios. If you look at Sri Lanka, for instance, if you look at what's happening in other countries, if you look at what's happening in North Africa where they are f facing food shortages and so on, it means that to a certain extent we've been helped by our ability to be food secure, though that's in question now because of uh, the lack of rains and stuff. But the situation is driven by external factors primarily. Though there are certain things that government can do, what I would call hygienic measures, to show the public that they care, you know? And I'm happy that when the Power Secretary and Secretary of Treasury are speaking, said, okay, we are cutting down on expenses, but you know government keeps cutting the same expenses, workshops, printing. So these are, <laughs> I think sometimes these are minimal 
reductions. We need to look at the budget squarely and see how do we reduce expenditure in a meaningful way. You know, because how many calendars does government print in, in any case? Is, are those sub significant reductions? You know? So government reducing expenditure for me is critical. And also government being more fiscally disciplined. I was also glad that you mentioned no supplementary budgets. Mm -hmm. We hope that this happens uh, because uh, it would be a good thing, mm -hmm. really. But. Uh, as to whether it, it, it will actually happen, the, the jury is still out there. But in principle, if someone says, I want to stop, if an alcoholic comes and says, I want to stop taking alcohol, you clap. So in this case, we say, thank you very much. No supplementary budget. It's a good first step. Let's see what happens. Well, after. let's see what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. John Wolgembe, who is Executive Director for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Uganda, continues this conversation with us, trying to find a way for the SMEs to charter recovery for themselves and for the economy at large after this break. Enabling SMEs recover from a strained economy and post-COVID-19 is the conversation that we are taking note of this morning. John Walgembe, ED for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, joins me yet again uh, to finish this kind of arms that we have opened. And he has committed that they intend to actually have a regional discussion about how Uganda can tap into regional trade, but also the African continent of free trade opportunity that is available. But I like that he's been very resound on the fact that you have to prepare the people, you have to prepare the enterprises in doing just so. It's not that the opportunity is there and you walk in like a landlord. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to prepare your house. That means that you start by looking at uh, the state of your business and standardization and policies and are you abiding to already the economic environment that requires you to actually thrive. Now you're looking at 2.5 million SME sellers Celebrating perseverance through the COVID-19 and the economic crisis. However, some actually jumped off the wagon because there was just no way they could breathe, later on survive. So they died, uh, you know, um, premature deaths, let me call them. They died premature deaths. Now, John, mm. I want to find out from you, those that had the premature death, mm. is there anything the Federation is intending to do to resuscitate them to come back into business? Okay, so firstly, we must tell the SMEs that if your business collapses, it is not an indictment on you. You, the entrepreneur, you have not collapsed. The idea, because if you look at successful entrepreneurs, most of them founded one, two, three, four, five businesses which collapsed. So you shouldn't feel bad or ashamed that your business collapsed. Moreover, if you look at the global statistics, what happened here is not any different from what happened in other countries. So what I can say is that pick yourself up. The reason we organize the MSME week is to transition you from lamenting. That's why we are saying charting a path the book of to recovery. We want to mm. say that is the, to the path. the book of acts. <laughs> <laughs> that is the path. You start taking it. And the first point is to re-educate yourself and to reflect what did I do wrong? What did I do right? What can I change? What can I learn from others? And an event like the MSME Week that we have organized in Ugogo starting today and ending on Friday is a great opportunity for you to learn from others, to learn from industry experts, to network, to look around. How did you make it? What did you do right? What did you wrong? We talked about people using their boots and things of that sort. Those are very innovative people because they noticed eh, eh, this rent issue. I'm not working. Why, why should I parent? Let me just use my car. Because I have clients who are next to me, they can't move, so they were able to figure out things very easily and adapt. Those who are not, most likely collapse. But if your business collapsed, says as I've mentioned, it's not a death sentence. You can always come back and start something new. But you must be able to reflect well on what worked and didn't work. And pick lessons, not just from yourself, but from others. And events like these should not be shunned. It's a free event for goodness' sake. You know? And then you're calling people all the time. You do this. You help me. You do whatever. All the help is there. We have centralized it. Just come, visit. No one is going to ask you for your ID. ID. No one is going to ask you for your employment. Large no one is going title. to ask you for what. <laughs> Just come and talk. You know? All these entities we've brought, they've all come. Why have they come? 
assurance companies, all these entities that are running different things to support SMEs, they've all come because they want to support you. Now, it's your duty to take advantage. You shouldn't just stay home and pity party, oh, my business collapsed, oh, I'm a poor entrepreneur, and so on. Get up, come, learn, seek help. The number of entities that would like to help you. So please take advantage of that help. All right. You had also mentioned that uh, through this annual week, you're going to have focus on uh, women and also youths to help Correct. them push forward yes. uh, through their enterprises. Yes. What are those deliberate moves that you're actually going to implement? No, so if you look at most of our SME panelists, we have intentionally only, we only have one SME who is a gentleman. The rest are women on purpose. And that gentleman is a youth. Because you are saying, let's now allow the women and youth to speak for themselves. Why should it be Warugembe to always come and hire all oh, the women SMEs have been there, the youth? No, let them speak and say what their issues are. Let the policymakers hear. And let's, let's get moving. The second issue is that all these entities we are bringing have special programs. If you look at UDB, they have a program for women and youth that they rolled out. So if you're a woman, you don't waste time and tell, tell me about UDB. When was it founded? Let, let, just go direct. I heard you had a program for women and youth. How can I benefit? Where are the forms? You know, so that you, you go direct on point and see where you benefit. Go to the next entity. You know? Those ones who need a lot of money, because those ones say, ah, me, I need a lot of money. I can't go for the MSME week. I've told you that the financial sector, depending on what's called a deal flow facility, that is wants to support SMEs that need 500,000 US dollars and above. And tomorrow afternoon, they are having a session of 20 companies that fall into this category, discussing what their needs are. If you're one of those, please come and ask for the side event for financial sector deepening, at which they'll be presenting the deal for facility and other investment options for businesses. Okay, Don, so give mm. us a recap. Uh, the event, the details, the time, the Thank you, Priscilla. We are having the MSME week running from today, the 20th of July, to the 23rd of July at the Uma Show Grounds in Lugogo at the Mount Purpose Hall. Entrance is free, except for exhibitors. If you want to exhibit, you pay something small because we pay the table, we pay the booth, and, and so on. We are going to have interesting discussions. The first day is going to focus on the policy environment, and we are having some public officials come today to discuss those issues. We are having also our civil society friends, the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group, CSBAC and CRTN. These are partners. They are coming because they, they are very strong in this space. We are also having the Director General of the Uganda Investment Authority. He confirmed. He wrote a letter. I'm coming. We are having the Director General of the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. You are having the Commissioner General of your a possibly coming. That I don't receive the letter, but he might come. So. We have brought all these important people. They are busy, but they have chosen to come to the MSME. Why? To help you. So please They're come and yeah. take advantage. They are here to be busy for you for the next three days, uh, yes. which is a beautiful thing. Thank you so much, General Gebe. You and we trust that this annual week is actually going to bear a lot of fruit, one of them uh, being the expectations of how do these SMEs actually recover from future shocks such as epidemics, pandemics, and economic crisis uh, in the near future. So you should go there and participate open all day long at the Uganda Manufacturers uh, Grounds. Uh, it's the it, Lugogo Multipurpose Hall is where you will find them all day long from today, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Away from that, well, it's time up for us morning at NTV. It's been a pleasure being in your company. Let's trust that the rest of the day is going to actually be a good day for you. And in case it's not a good day, your attitude actually is your, your, your pride. Your attitude is your currency. So have the best attitude no matter what is going to come in front of you today. Your attitude will be the one to actually clear it out of the way or even keep it in the way. The choice is in your hands. Uh, thank you so much for having joined us. See you tomorrow at 6.30.